Good morning. So good to be with you. Today we're looking at a couple of verses from the book of Lamentations. Let me set up the context for you. The book of Lamentations is mourning this national disaster that happened in the year 586 BC. This is when the Babylonians destroyed Jerusalem. And not only did they destroy the city of this Jerusalem, they also destroyed the temple, which was the center of worship. And then the Babylonians took the people of God captive and into exile. The Bible Knowledge Commentary describes it in this way. The armies of Babylon burned the temple, the king's palace, and all the other major buildings in the city. And they tore down the walls of the city, which provided her protection. When the Babylonians finally finished their destruction and departed with their prisoners, they left a jumbled heap of smoldering rubble. That's the context of the book of Lamentations. The author is tra traditionally attributed to Jeremiah. That's why Jeremiah sometimes is called the weeping prophet. And Jeremiah is weeping. He's crying out because of the desolation, because of the destruction, because of the misery and the agony and the suffering and the affliction. Robert Loth, bishop of the Church of England, said this about the book of Lamentations. He said, he said Every letter is written with a tear. Every word, the sound of a broken heart. That's the book of Lamentations. If I could summarize the book of Lamentations in one phrase, this would be the phrase. Overwhelming human sorrow. The book of Lamentations is five chapters long. And every chapter is filled with suffering and pain and brokenness. Five chapters of overwhelming human sorrow. But there's something surprising in the middle. Jeremiah says something very interesting in Lamentations chapter 3, beginning in verse 21. Listen carefully. He writes this. But this I call to mind, and therefore I have hope. The steadfast love of the Lord never ceases. His mercies never come to an end. They are new every morning. Great is your faithfulness. Smack dab in the middle of lamentations. Surrounded by all this misery and all this darkness and all this sorrow is this treasure of a verse here. It's almost like this ray of sunlight. It's almost like this glimmer of hope. Jeremiah uses this very interesting word in this verse. He uses the word hesed. Hesed is a very powerful Hebrew word, rich, deep, very meaningful. Hesed is very difficult to translate into English. Some scholars say it's actually untranslatable in English, the word hesed. Dr. Tim Bulkley offers this translation. He says, hesed is stickability through thick and thin. He says the nearest that our culture gets to the word has said is our marriage vows for better, for worse, for richer, for poorer, in sickness and in health. Another way to understand the word has said is through stories, through imagery. And one such story is the story of Ruth. The story begins with a famine in the land of Judah. There's a man, his name is Elimelech, and in order to escape this famine, he takes his wife and his two sons and they become refugees in a foreign country. They live in the land of Moab. And then tragedy happens. Elimelech dies. 
And so his wife, whose name is Naomi, becomes a widow. She's a single mother with two sons. Well, her two sons, they marry Moabite women. And they settle in this land of Moab and they live there for about 10 years. And then tragedy strikes again. Naomi's two sons die. And so now Naomi is left with her two daughters-in-law. Well, Naomi receives word that the Lord has come to the rescue and provided for his people. The famine is over. And so she decides that she's going to return home to Judah. So Naomi says to her two daughters-in-law, You have been very kind to me, but you are a Moabite woman. And so you should stay in Moab. You don't have to follow me to Judah. Go back to your family. Go back to your people and to your gods. Go ahead and remarry and have a happy life. And one of Naomi's daughter-in-law says, Oh, Ken, shoots. I'm going then. Aloha. And she bails. Well, the other daughter-in-law, her name is Ruth. And listen to her response. She says this. Do not urge me to leave you or to turn away from you. Where you go, I will go. And where you stay, I will stay. Your people will be my people and your God, my God. Where you die, I will die. And there I will be buried. That's has said. I don't know any daughter-in-law who would say this to their mother-in-law. That's has said. That stickability through thick and thin. That's for better, for worse, for richer, for poor, in sickness and in health. That's has said. So in the middle of this hot mess, Jeremiah writes, but this I call to mind, and therefore I have hope. The hesed of the Lord, the steadfast love of the Lord, the stickability through thick and thin of the Lord, the for better, for worse, for richer, for poor, in sickness and in health of the Lord, the wherever you go, I will go, and, and where you stay, I will stay of the Lord. The hesed, the steadfast love of the Lord, never ceases. His mercies never come to an end. They are new every morning. Great is your faithfulness. It's as if Jeremiah is determined to remember the hesed of the Lord. It's as if Jeremiah is saying, no matter what has happened in the past, no matter what is happening now, and no matter what happens in the future, I'm going to hold on to this truth that the hesed, the steadfast love of the Lord never ceases. His mercies never come to an end. They are new every morning. I love the, that phrase. They are new every morning. It's kind of like in the morning, you get a fresh batch, a fresh serving, a fresh portion of the hesed of the Lord, of the steadfast love of the Lord. And so you know what? When I'm feeling cr crummy, this is what I do. I go to bed. I go to sleep. Why? Because the sooner I go to sleep, the sooner I wake up and there's a fresh portion, a fresh serving of hesed of the hesed of Yahweh, the steadfast love of Yahweh waiting for me. But this I call to mind, and therefore I have hope. The steadfast love of the Lord never ceases. His mercies never come to an end. 
They are new every morning. Great is your faithfulness. Thank you for tuning in. God bless you and God bless your family.